So let's start. Uh, I'm Tomek, and I'm working at Allegro, which is one of the biggest e-commerce solutions in Central Europe. We have been using Mesos and Marathon since 2015 on the production. And today, I want to share our insights of why you should consider writing uh, your custom Mesos executor to obtain cloud-native application ecosystem. So if you are not familiar with uh, Mesos Executor, I strongly encourage you to see the um, MesosCon Asia talk by Vinod and Greg about uh, deep dive for the Mesos Executor. They're talking about more technical details of the Mesos Executor and uh, how they work and uh, authentication and stuff like this. Uh, today, I will focus only on a functionality without code, just uh, just uh, we'll focus on the what Mesos Executor could give us in terms of building a better ecosystem for our applications. So just a quick recap to, have, uh, to share the same state of mind. Uh, Executor is a process that is launched on agent in order to launch a task. It works for frameworks. It just get a task info or uh, executor info, in fact, from Protobuf, and start the task that is defined there. So I hope you are familiar with this image. Uh, this is the architecture of Mesos. And today, we will be talking and, uh, about uh, this, these guys. Uh, they are the custom executor for different frameworks, like Hadoop MPI. And uh, what they are working, they are mm, getting information from a framework that are passed by master and works on slay uh, agents and starts the tasks. And our uh, executor is responsible for maintaining the whole uh, task lifecycle. So there are four types of executor. There's a command executor that is probably the most known and used uh, executor uh, in the market. It's using the V0 uh, API of Mesos. Uh, it's bind to libmesos native library. Uh, it uh, the, it's has a capability of running only one task. And there is a Docker executor that is really similar to a command executor, but it's running Docker. There is a defo default uh, executor that was introduced in Mesos 1.0. Uh, it's using V1 uh, HTTP API, so there is no uh, native binding. Uh, it has capability of running pods and uh, multiple tasks. And what we are talking about today is a custom executor. So it can be written whenever you like. You can use deprecated API if you like, or I strongly encourage you to use an HTTP v1 API for, for writing your custom executor. Uh, to build a cloud uh, native applications, we need some guides. At Allegro, we follow uh, 12 factor apps. If you are not familiar, it's uh, something like a manifest of how to write a cloud-native application designed by Heroku. It consists of the 12 factors uh, that need to be fulfilled in order to say that application is cloud-native. And what does it mean to be a cloud-native in a Mesos ecosystem? Uh, it means it, it's not only bind to a Mesos. When the application is cloud-native, it has a really small contract that needs to be fulfilled in order to run that application in different schedulers. So if you have a cloud-native application, there is no, uh, no worry to switch between Marathon, Mesos, Kubernetes, whatever scheduler you like. Uh, there are no dependency in-app, so there is no problem with uh, starting it up or upgrading uh, your ecosystem because application has a small contract that needs to be fulfilled in order to application to run. So let's walk through these 12 uh, factors. Uh, the code base application should be built in a, from a one single uh, repository. So executor will not help us here. Uh, dependencies. This means that applications should have all its dependencies in the application. So no, uh, it should not rely on a system. So if your application has a dependency to uh, Java, it probably should have embedded Java inside the application package. If it needs a Tomcat to run, the Tomcat should be there, or any other uh, HTTP uh, server runtime, like Nginx or stuff like this. Everything should be in a single package that could be uh, run uh, just with a single command. 
or in a container if you can't mm, statically link your application. Uh, configuration. Configuration should be stored in an environment variables. And this is the place when uh, executor can help us. I will talk about it later. Uh, backing services. Mm. This means that if you need to some other services, for example, application require Tomcat to, to be run in, it should be embedded within an application. Uh, build, release, and run, it's pretty simple, so the, the steps should be separated. Executor will not help us here. Uh, processes, application should use one or more processes, and it depends on your uh, workflow. Uh, there are some applications that are single-threaded, and in theory, executor could help us uh, scale them uh, by running another processes, but currently Marathon does, MSS does not support uh, changing the resources on the fly. Mm. Port binding, pretty easy. Applications should uh, expose its services via uh, some services binded to a port, so it is easy to achieve in the MSS ecosystem. Uh, concurrency, we are scaling up the process uh, by adding more applications, uh, more instances of the same application. Disposability, this is interesting. Our application should be uh, available to start and kill at any time, but and we should provide a graceful way of starting the application up and a graceful shutdown. Uh, dev priority, so your ops uh, or DevOps team should have the same uh, environment or as close as possible in terms of configuration and used uh, tools. Uh, logs. Application should stream the logs to standard output. And uh, it should not have dependency on some Kibana on uh, ELcast uh, stack uh, to get to know where to send the logs, just standard output or standard error. And ecosystem should take care of where the logs are put. Uh, admin processes. Run management task as a one of tasks, so executor is not helpful there. Uh, so to sum up, there are three factors that we can fix with a custom executor. Configs, disposability, and logs. Let's talk about configs. So the 12 up uh, stores configuration in uh, environment variables. Uh, what does it mean? There shouldn't be any uh, config files that are stored in a repository. There shouldn't be uh, some magical endpoint to download configuration from. Mm, ap uh, application should start up with the environment field with the proper configuration. Mm, how it's working at Allegro? Uh, we have a certificate authority, which is uh, signing a certificate uh, obtained by Mesos agent. We have written a Mesos hook that is uh, generating certificates for an application before it starts. Uh, then, Mesos agent starts an executor. Executor gets the uh, certificate in the environment and call the configuration store to get some uh, configuration. Uh, configuration store uh, keeps the uh, encrypted version of the configuration, uh, and it could be it need to be authenticated and decrypted with a certificate obtained by. Uh, certificate authority. So the message agent is a single point of trust because it it has some uh, token to talk with the certificate authority. And then executor take this uh, configuration from the config store and fill up the environment variables for the task and task runs and it uh, just read the environment and uh, set up accordingly uh, to the configuration. Uh, Yesterday was a talk about uh, secrets, and you may wonder why we haven't used the secrets. Because when we started, about more than two years ago, there was not that feature in uh, Mesos. It w uh, secrets are available in, uh, I think, 1.4, so it is pretty new feature. Uh, that's why we built something like this. And um, why we are not uh, filling up the configuration in a uh, hook, like a message hook, uh, because the certificate obtained from a certificate authority uh, is used uh, also to communicate between the applications. So if the application needs some stronger security due to our compliance, uh, 
they authenticate using this certificate. Okay, second thing, disposability. So the application uh, should uh, can be started at any time. W what does it mean? Uh, it should try to minimize startup time, just in order to be able to scale fast, or in if there is an outage, to quickly minim to minimize the outage uh, consequences, and uh, should have uh, should support uh, s um, shutdown. Uh, when there is a sick term, applications should gracefully shut down. Graceful shutdown means that the application will uh, try to finish all the transactions and operations that uh, were started before, but do not accept any incoming traffic. Uh, so take a look at application lifecycle. When the application is started, it's, fe it's fetching its dependencies, like uh, packages. It's done by Mesos Fetcher. Uh, then the health checks start checking application, and application is starting, uh, booting up, like uh, loading its dependencies and stuff like this. Then it has some time to warm up caches, and then it answers to a health check that, okay, I'm healthy, I can get incoming traffic. Um, uh, so what happens here? When application is healthy, we should plug it into our discovery service solution into load balancers, uh, cache, uh, external caches like varnish, uh, into monitoring and stuff like this. So this is hard to obtain with uh, events sent from a, a framework. Mm. At, at the end, when the application is uh, should be killed, it should get a sick term, finish I all its jobs, like uh, finish a database transaction and uh, pending processes. Uh, so in that, uh, so when the application gets a sick term, it should be uh, removed from discovery service and every, uh, every place that was, it was plugged during the startup. And then it uh, moved to a killing state. And when everything goes down and the graceful timeout in a couple of seconds or minutes, depends on application ends, it's kill it with a uh, kill minus nine, so sick kill uh, if it doesn't uh, stop properly. Uh, so why we can't rely on uh, events delivered by frameworks? Uh, if you remember the uh, Mesos architecture, the mm, communicate the communication between task and framework comes uh, by the number of uh, hop hoops. So there is, uh, when the instance is started and is healthy, Mesos Executor is sending the event, oh, task is running and is healthy to a Mesos agent. Mesos agent send the information to a Mesos master, and Mesos master informs the framework, hey, that instance is healthy. So there's a huge delay between uh, when the application is healthy and when the framework gets that information. What's more? The framework uh, will send an event when it gets that information, and here is our uh, 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 events delay. So the, di the time difference between when frameworks send an event or created an event, and when the our uh, config uh, service discovery solution got it. So as you can see, in a peak, it's about 30 milliseconds, and in our scale, that means that some people will uh, get a blank page when it comes to Allegro. And uh, we, we can, uh, it's not acceptable for us yeah, to, to have errors just by design. So that's why we move to, uh, uh, to monitor uh, application lifecycle in, applic uh, in an message executor. So uh, here is a diagram of a, a task lifecycle in Mesos. It's simplified. There are not all connections that should be here, and there are a couple of tasks uh, of uh, uh, statuses missing. Uh, so I will describe what is here. Uh, the gray uh, circles are managed by Mesos. So I I you have no control in an executor over that uh, statuses. The double circle are the terminal states. The, the task should could not be recovered from that state and probably is 
uh, probably died. Uh, and the dashed circle are optional. Uh, for example, default execution uh, command executor does not send uh, starting uh, information priority to 1.5, I believe. And so let's take a look how the um, how the life cycle looks. So the first task is staging. At that moment, uh, Mesos is trying to find a place to set up the task. So there's no instance running. In fact, nothing uh, happened. Uh, it could finish in a terminal state. If that task is uh, has wrong configuration, it could finish with error or could be dropped. And then there is a starting phase. As you can see, uh, in the starting phase, Mesos executor is started. It registers to a Mesos agent, and then it should start the task. Uh, so when task is in a starting phase, it's like downloading all, uh, its all dependencies. In our case, uh, it's uh, it's just starting, and then we start help checking that service. So when the service uh, uh, is uh, started and the health checks are running, it moves to a uh, running state. Uh, the running state uh, could have uh, set a uh, healthy state. That's why uh, this task, the task could be could have multiple running statuses, one after another, because that it could be healthy, unhealthy, and uh, it works in a loop. And from the running state. When task is in the running state and for the first time is healthy, we register the task uh, in uh, discovery service. In our case, it's a console. And also with some load balancer if it's exposed uh, to the rest of the world. Uh, then, when task is going to kill, it should be moved to a killing state. So before sending a seek term to an application, we uh, remove the application from uh, remove the instance from config uh, service discovery and from the uh, from load balancers so in this state application has some time to finish uh, its job and then it get moved to uh, be uh, killed like uh, it happens when it's like a regular upgrade failed if the it was killed by a uh, mesos uh, by a Mesos health check, or finished if it's just a simple finish. So, uh, so why do we need uh, Mesos executor right here? Because you can say okay, but default executor also has a, a property called uh, graceful uh, startup uh, shutdown and grace period, and in fact, uh, it's not working with the command executor. Uh, why? Because the Command executor started a command with a shell. So it started with sh minus c and then some command to run. Uh, so when you want to kill a, a task, a Mesos executor will just kill that, uh, have a handle to the shell. And when it sends a seek term to a shell, shell immediately goes down. Then the Mesos executor captured the event, the seek child. Uh, signal and see, oh, that application is no longer running. But in fact, the application is running underneath, but the only shell goes down. So there is no uh, real uh, grace period in a command executor. Uh, second thing that we, we find when working with Mesos health checks, the Mesos, uh, in a Mesos UI, Mesos startup time was wrong. And we accidentally fixed it by introducing the uh, starting phase. Uh, default executor, uh, command, command executor does not use a, a starting uh, task status. So there's only a task running. And because of how Mesos is handling the, uh, the same task statuses, uh, sometimes application was uh, the keeps the last health check uh, timestamp as a as a task started. It was not the big issue, but uh, it could be problematic when you go to UI and see that your tasks are uh, started uh, like a couple of minutes ago while they are working for a longer, uh, long, uh, <coughs> uh, for a week or something like this. 
Um, okay, so uh, here is an example of graceful shutdown of one of our uh, biggest application that is handling the traffic from our customers. What you can see here, at uh, 3.50 we enable uh, executor. So this is the regular deployment. There was no graceful startup nor graceful shutdown at that time. As you can see, we have over thousands of errors. Uh, then we um, do a couple of restarts. And you can see that with a graceful uh, shutdown, the errors has uh, reduced to less than uh, less than 500, and in fact about 200. And uh, in the last uh, uh, at 350, we disable executor. This means we disable the graceful shutdown of the application and do again a couple of restarts. And when you sum up that bars, it's return to the previous uh, state when there are thousands of errors during the deployment. Um, yeah, so that's that's how it helps us. Uh, why there are errors even when the application is uh, has a regress uh, shutdown? Mm, we suspect that the application needs some time to warm up, and that was not implemented at that time. So uh, I haven't got a fresh. Uh, fresh metrics from for that applications because uh, it's pretty expensive to perform that type of test to just restart applications and uh, some users may be complaining that they've got 500 on uh, telegram.pl okay uh, logs mm. application should uh, write its logs to an uh, standard output so there should be no log files uh, no need to uh, manage uh, mm, log rotating and stuff like this. When we started, most of our application has a dependency to a Kibana, and all of our application were sending logs directly to a Kibana. Uh, this means when we want to change the URL or uh, anything related to a logs, every application in our ecosystem needs to be updated. For example, when we want uh, when we want to add some new field uh, in in a metadata, the ev each application in our ecosystem needs to be updated, and this is this is hard to obtain when you've got more than 100 uh, services because you need to ask the uh, personal uh, people that are responsible for uh, given services. Uh, Hi, could you update that dependency? They probably said, oh, no, we have some business to do. Uh, we don't have time to do it. So uh, remove any dependency that is not needed from the application perspective. So how is working? Executor launches tasks. And because it launches the task, it has control over the uh, STD, uh, STD out and STDR of that uh, task. So it can uh, manage to send the log uh, logs to some central log store and also to write them to a file. Executor has all metadata about the task is running. So the whole executor info that contains command info or container info mm -hmm. about the task. So there, there is no problem to add uh, information for uh, services like Kibana so the Kibana can know in which bucket uh, put the uh, uh, put the log. You may wonder why we haven't used uh, container logger for this, because in fact the container logger is a uh, interface that has the same capability. You just implement a, uh, one abstract class from the Mesos, and it gets the same information as executor. So there is uh, executor info and you can write your logic what should happen with the logs. And the problem with the container logger is that you need to write it in a C++ and it's uh, strongly related to a Mesos. So whenever you need you want to update a Mesos, you need to recompile your container logger and see and check if uh, your dependencies has the same version as the um, as a Mesos and if everything was uh, compiled and linked properly and everything is working. So that's why we prefer to use an uh, executor, because it has an HTTP API, and there is a guarantee that uh, 
whenever we update the methods, the executor will still work. So finally, who is using this approach? Because I've seen that the um, Marathon community is not using custom executors. There are some code uh, related to a custom executor in Marathon, but it looks like it's not uh, it's not maintained from the couple of years. Like code is untouched from two or more years, and we have some troubles when started using custom executor. Uh, starting from the UI that was completely unaware of the executor thing and uh, some configuration options in Marathon. So Aurora is the best example of a custom executor. It, I think it's used it from the beginning, but I'm not sure. Uh, in Aurora, executor is called Thermos. And what is the, the similar thing that we are doing as and Aurora does is uh, registering in uh, Zookeeper. In, in Aurora, it's a Zookeeper. In our case, it's a console. So uh, executor takes care of registering in a service discovery, performs self-checking, the same as our executor. And we do not have some custom DSL like Aurora. So we obviously does not have this feature. And the second popular executor is a Singularity executor. It supports custom fetcher. I don't know why they need it, but it uses some fancy S3 downloader. Probably something works better or faster. It supports log rotation, so it helps you uh, manage the logs and uh, stuff like this. And uh, support the graceful task killing. So two of the three factors from 12 factors up are covered by a singularity executor. And the third, I have heard about this executor yesterday. Uh, so there are other companies that are investigating, uh, in fact, I think this is OVH, uh, that are considering using a custom executor. Uh, this GoMessage executor uh, is similar to our Allegro executor built on in Go, built on top of the Mesos Go library. Uh, internally, we are not uh, using uh, Docker so much, but this uh, has support to a Docker and has a similar approach. So uh, I think you, you should start using executor just, and here's a quick recap. Uh, why we need it? Control over application lifecycle and environment without the uh, need to query uh, scheduler, methods, waiting for events and stuff like this. You are a master of your application and you can uh, control how it behaves and when, uh, when it's healthy or not, and when it's starting uh, killing or anything. Mm -hmm. So it's a replacement for framework events. So this means your framework can do less, because it will not have to send any events. And th there is some space for work runs and hacks, as I so, uh, showed you before, that Mesos uh, could have some bugs, like this graceful shutdown or uh, or not necessary bugs, but could not work in a way that you expect, and you can fix it with a Mesos executor. So that's all, and I would be happy to take some questions. Okay, no question. So thank you.